Everybody knew you as Jerry Ranselli, and now it's Jerry Elsden. Yes. What happened? Well, you know, life goes on. Um, I got divorced and remarried a wonderful man by the name of Kerry Elston, a Canadian national who came here eight, nine years ago on business and uh, not only decided to take me as his wife, but actually decided to make South Africa his home. So, uh, and that's the story. You have a beautiful home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's very beautiful. From, you, you were a very strong-willed teenager, grew up on the Cape Flats. Yeah. Long way from the Cape Flats now. It is a very long way from the Cape Flats, but, uh, you know, I think with, with, with every, I guess, successful South African, you have to go on a journey. Um, my journey took me out of the Cape. I was 16 and a half, 17 years old, just graduated high school, gone through one year of uh, finishing school secretarial college, uh, started a job uh, with a company that was retrenching <laughs> and there was the whole policy as you remember of last in first out uh, I was last in um, but what was interesting was that the um, CEO of the company for whom I was a secretary receptionist actually said when they were saying goodbye to the staff and I was the first they were saying goodbye to, he said to me that I had a great future ahead of me, that I am eloquent and I'm lovely and I'm hardworking and that he envisions that I will do great things. And I said, thank you, Mr. Graham English and uh, left and thought, well, that's kind, but you know, you are firing me. Um, and then a few days later, packed a bag and came up to Johannesburg and um, started a life that I could only have dreamed about because I certainly didn't expect it for myself. Well, I am a mother of uh, many, many children. Uh, they call me Mom Jerry, they call me Mom, they call me G-Unit, they call me Jerry, they call me The G. Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of names because they, none of them are born from my, from my womb. Um, these are all young people and very, very small people who uh, have come into my life through various circumstances and uh, uh, Kerry and I have given them a home. So I'm a mother, I'm an activist. I was an activist in my youth when I first came to, into Johannesburg. I started work with the ANC and so on. So um, I, I was a political activist and I was a social activist. There are so many inequalities in our, in our country. There are so many in, 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 uh, inequities and inequalities on the continent of Africa. So much work to do. And um, I really believe that my, um, my rise to, to fame in South Africa positioned me perfectly to take on the social ills that are um, uh, visiting our people. And, and I've made a decision to do that. I have, uh, so I've been a patron for a children's home called Otandweni Family Center in Soweto um, here in Johannesburg for uh, the last nine years. And over those nine years, children have come and gone out of the system. And um, Kerry and I made the decision that we would bring children home on the weekend uh, as weekend parents and we did that for a while but at some point we had to make it official and so we both signed up and did all the classes to become foster parents i uh, got registered with the judicial system and so our home is really a short-term place of safety uh, but it feels like it's become a long-term home for many of the children uh, we never turn a young person away <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a nice, secure, luxurious, safe house for children, yes. The fact of the matter is that even in luxurious environments like my home, there are other homes just like mine where children are being abused right now in some way or another. Um, it's love and personal interaction that makes children feel safe, not necessarily the, the smallness or the largeness of their environment. I grew up in a small home with four other siblings and my mother, we lived in two bedroom and three bedroom houses, um, sometimes with uh, hot water, sometimes without, sometimes cooking on a private, uh, primer stove, um, in the days of the little paraffin stove. Um, and, and still I felt happy and I felt safe and I felt secure. 
So the security of a child is not based on how much money you throw at it. It's firmly based on the amount of personal care and time you spend with them. I think I'm a real mum. And if you put mum and nurturer together with activist, you, you find a, a social politician, um, someone who's prepared to stand in front of those who are hurting and say, you will not hurt these people anymore. We will not stand for this anymore. You will not come into the space again. Um, and and um, I feel strongly about that, you know. Uh, even with campaigns, you know, when, when people go for social campaigns that are popular and big and sexy, I always seem to be more attracted to the project that is the underdog. Epilepsy, TB, for example. Oh. Um, to the first question, am I disappointed? I am hugely disappointed. This is certainly not um, what I believe um, the women marched for in August. Um, our mothers, the mothers of our nations marched for during the month of August all those years ago. This certainly is not what children died for in 1976 during the June uprisings. This what we're experiencing in South Africa now is not what the children of the 80s uh, uh, endured uh, uh, gas inhalation and bugshot for. This was not it. This is not what we fought for. Um, and so I, I am desperate for more social politicians to perhaps um, just put down the, uh, take off the business suit once in a while, because you know what happened is we were youth activists. Uh, and then the country changed and we became a democratic society. And we began to look for opportunities to grow ourselves um, financially, socially, and so on. And I would just desire that all those youth activists who feel the way I do, just put the business suit aside for just a little bit. Just get out of the S-Class Mercedes-Benz for just a little while and just begin to give a voice to something that matters. Um, because I think we need to be heard again. If we're not heard, we are not giving a voice to the people who need us most in South Africa. My personal involvement um, with the Department of Health started with my, my diagnosis of tuberculosis within my womb. Um, I soon realized that TB was widespread in South Africa, but um, not always being communicated well to the public. Uh, I also discovered that the stigma around TB was still rife. And um, I then also realized that as a public figure, chances are there was something I could do about it. And so I started putting my voice to TB, um, working um, um, with, with organizations that work in both HIV and TB in South Africa to bring awareness, um, telling my story, speaking to patients, telling their stories, just highlighting the plight of South Africans living with TB and more often than not, uh, TB that is related to their HIV positive status. And it's been 13 years and the work has been truly fulfilling.